It's your birthday party! You made a wish and blew out the candles. It's time to cut this delicious round cake. Your guests can't wait to taste it. Wait a minute. Are you sure you actually know how to cut it? Normally, people prefer making V-shaped slices by default. Although this method is very popular, it's far from perfect. Some guests won't get enough frosting, while others will get too much. And besides, cakes are pretty fragile, so crumbs can fall all over the place. This alternative method went viral because of its incredible practicality. All you need to do is press a large cutting board against the cake very gently. Then slice the cake across horizontally and move the long piece onto the cutting board. Now you can cut one big slice into several smaller slices for the guests. This will give them a chance to order exactly as much or as little dessert as they really want. Wait, who wants just a little dessert? You will also prevent the leftover cake from drying out too soon. And if someone asks for more, just keep repeating the cutting board trick as many times as you need to. If the number of guests at your party doesn't match the small size of your cake, there's an easy tip to make sure everyone served. Cut the cake into small cubes, put them into paper baking cups, and pierce the slices with a toothpick to make sure the layers don't fall apart. You can serve this cake canapé on a tray. When you don't have a knife at hand to cut a cake, dental floss will help you out. If you manage to do the work gently, the floss will glide through your cake with ease and keep the icing decoration in perfect order. This method is also very handy when you want to cut pie or cake layers horizontally. Of course, it's better to use dental floss with a neutral flavor if you don't want to feel the minty frost in your dessert. You're hanging some pictures or framed diplomas on a wall, I have several, but they refuse to hang straight. If you're using a wire and only one nail, it's very likely that the picture will get crooked. So the better solution is to use two nails. They will help the artwork stay there straight. Also, make sure that the wire is only as long as it needs to be. Otherwise, the excess slack will make the picture stagger on the wall. And finally, you can use these small clear sticky tabs. Stick them on the bottom corner of either side of your frame pictures and prevent them from slipping. Now, even the highest quality markers stop working sooner or later, but that's not a reason to say goodbye to them. Glue the markers around the outer edge of a regular flower pot. Then spray this construction with gold paint. You'll get a glamorous vase that will spice up your interior. To complete this project, you can use not only a pot, but any other cylindrical vase or tin cans that match the size of your markers. Have you ever spilled your hot drink down on your clothes as you were walking from the cafeteria to your desk? Probably yes. Most people wrap their hands around the mug or use a handle. But none of these methods is perfect because they leave room for burns. Recent studies have revealed the best way to hold a coffee mug to prevent any spillage. And I bet you don't use it on a daily basis. Put your hands in a claw-like shape and grip your mug from above with your fingers. This will protect you from burning your palm and keeping your outfit tidy. And besides, it looks kind of elegant. Now, in case you didn't know, there are little tabs on the sides of your foil container. You're supposed to push those in. Now, when you pull the foil out, it's going to glide effortlessly. And the foil tube will be fixed in the container. Shoe stores usually sell their items with small plastic hangers. Don't rush to throw away this accessory, it's not so worthless. If your shoes ever get wet, you can use it to hang them on a radiator, so they dry quickly and evenly. This trick is especially handy when you get your feet wet on the way to work. If you like to wash and dry your shoes in a washing machine to keep them fresh and tidy, you know that it can get really noisy. To avoid the sound of rocks rolling around the drum, put your shoes and your laces inside a mesh laundry bag. If you don't have a laundry bag, try using an empty pillowcase. You can also put a large old towel in the washing machine together with your shoes. It'll rub against the shoes and provide additional cleaning. Just make sure you don't wipe your face with this towel afterward. Glass cleaning spray is a great emergency tool to restore your patent leather shoes. 
Just spray it on your shoes and wipe them using a soft, dry cloth. Voila! Shining bright like a diamond. Got some creases on your shoes? No panic. Stuff your shoes tightly with some fabric to bring them back to their original shape. Then put a damp towel over the crease. Gently steam the crease with an iron. It'll get softer or disappear completely. Here's a genius tip for storing and serving fresh herbs. Cut and mix different herbs, then put them in a plastic bottle. Screw the cap and keep it in your fridge. Now you don't have to chop your herbs every time you're cooking something. You can also make an exclusive salad dressing. Just add some oil, spices, and sauce into this bottle and shake it to mix all the ingredients. When you're reheating your food in a microwave, some part of the meal gets too hot while the rest of it stays frosty. So, in case you've been looking for different tips to deal with this issue, here's the classic one. Put your food on a plate and make a hole in the center so that your meal is donut-shaped. This way, the microwave will heat it more evenly. But don't put the dish in the center of the turntable. To heat it evenly, it's best to keep it on the outer edge. If you need to heat up two meals at the same time, put a clean upside-down cup inside the microwave. Then put your second plate on top of that cup. There you go! It's easy and time-saving. You can squeeze lemon juice out using ordinary kitchen tongs. Cut the lemon in half and put one half into the tongs. Now press them under a bowl to collect the juice. Add some water, sugar, and ice, and enjoy your lemonade. You're cooking popcorn in a microwave and can't wait to start watching the new episode of your favorite show. After one or two minutes of microwaving, little hard kernels still stay on the bottom of the popcorn bag. People tend to grab them by mistake. Biting these little betrayers can be fatal for your teeth. But luckily, there's a little slit in the bottom of the bag. Here's what you're supposed to do. When your popcorn is ready, don't rush to open the bag. Turn the bag upside down and shake it vigorously under a bowl. All the unpopped kernels will come out. Now you can enjoy your snack safely. If you have accidentally burnt the food on your stove and want to avoid dealing with fire detectors, here's a simple trick. One of the best ways to remove smoke quickly is to use a half-wet towel. Hold on to the dry side of the towel and keep flinging it around over your head. The damp part of the towel will absorb the solid particles in the smoke very quickly. And there's no need to use a knife to peel kiwi. Just cut off the top and the bottom of the kiwi. Then gently insert a tablespoon inside of the kiwi and twist it to separate the skin from the fruit. Wow, your kiwi is now peeled! However, some people prefer eating kiwi with skin. It's perfectly edible and provides lots of fiber, folate, and antioxidants. So if you don't mind this fluffy texture, go ahead. But don't forget to wash it first.